Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 13 of the June Lead Code Daily Challenge. Uh, let me know what you think of today's poem. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and let's get started. Now, largest divisible subset. Okay, given a set of distinct positive integers, find the largest subset such that every pair S sub i, S sub j of elements in this subset satisfy S sub i. Uh, mod s sub j is equal to zero or, or s sub j mod f sub i is equal to zero. If there are multiple solutions, return any subset is fine. Okay. Um, I, so I think the thing that I think about is uh, the transitive property. And what I mean by that is that um, Okay, so let's say our, in our subset, we want to have at least three elements, or, you know, we start with two. Two is obvious because, you know, any i and j where one divides the other is fine. But let's say you have a third element, right? How do you add a third element into the set? Well, the third element, you can add it to the set if... If... Um, You can add the dollar element in, in set if the, the well, I, I, what I also want to see is um, what n, I just double check to see where n, n is, how big n is, and it doesn't really say, but but if, for example, let's say you have one and two and you want to add four, well, four mods two is equal to zero, that means that there's a, there's a, a sort of a property where you could define the subset by the largest element because because well one is what we kind of talked about the transitive property where if four mod two is equal to zero then and two mod one is equal to zero then four mod one is equal to zero right so so basically what I'm trying to say is that if a mod b is equal to zero and b mod c is equal to zero then a mod c is equal to zero right that this implies this um, and you can prove to yourself that that's correct. Um, and because of that, and because of that, then you can, um, that's really all you need. And you can represent a number um, by the largest number in the set, and then kind of do a sort of a dynamic programming on that one, and then go it back up. Um, I think there are a couple of ways I, I'm thinking about it, depending on how, how, um, it depends what N is, right? I think that's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, but N, they don't really tell you N, because in theory, you could do this in N square time, and maybe you could do this in N square root of N times, uh, with by factorization. Uh, and I'm going to try to go through both and then see if it works and if not then maybe we have to do something even better but yeah but i think for me it's clear that we want to sort it into order first uh from small to largest because so that we can process that in order because because let's say we have this number this this sequence we always want to go um two before the eight because eight has a chance of going to two, but not the other way around. I mean, you could maybe argue uh, and do some other ordering, but I think that's the way I'm going to do it. So let's, let's get started. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, and that's so, let's sort the numbers. And then now I'm going to do some sort of dynamic programming-ish. Um, Hmm. So what does it mean to be, well, let's start with the n square algorithm and then we could play around with what that means. Um, so basically let, let's just do, uh, yeah, like 
and and from this I, I will do, the end square algorithm is dynamic programming it reminds me of uh, the shortest path or the long um, the longest path in a DAG uh, can I do any better is there any greedy as you can imagine my one of my cases that I could think about is just something like this where uh, what well, is this plus powers of of um, three or something like that, right? And, and then we have to sort it. Uh, and then what happens if we have a six, say, which because six is divides two and three, so. And then six. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think that um, we're just going to start by doing this with dynamic programming, and then we'll figure out um, figure out if I need to optim optimize this. But yeah. Okay. This is equal to one times n, where n is your length of nums. Uh, and set the first elements previous is equal to, well, I guess actually the negative one is fine, but uh, and then and then now this to if for um, index num in range uh, in enumerate nums. We can do something like, um, okay. So best of num is, uh, best of index is always going to be at, at least start with zero. Um, okay, let's do this then. And if four in If num mod previous num is equal to zero, then previous of and you could just check for best if best sub and this should actually be one because you always have one element uh, best of uh, index is less than best of the previous index plus one best of index is one previous of uh, brief index okay and then now we just have to take the um, take the uh, the best of the best index so say highest is equals zero for Um, and the reason why we have to go for the loop is because the um, the best element might not have to be at the end, right? So you, you could have like in a way that's like for example, if you have something like this, and ninety nine, right? Um, you know, one to ninety nine might might be a sequence but it's not the longest sequence so that's why we have to go through it I'll just keep the height as index and then now we could reconstruct this going backwards
and then that's uh, that's one it. Hmm. Why this part? Uh, it's the only part that may have issue. Let's see. Hmm. Uh, let's make that one. I think I just may have an off by one, so that's uh, let's print it out for a second. Hmm. Why is it zero? zero. Oh, because yeah okay fine that's this is just a python thing where um where this could be negative one <laughs> so mm, what we want actually is um yeah okay fine So in Python, if you have a negative index, it goes, it checks from the bottom, uh, from the last element of the index, and that's why we can do it. But yeah. Oh, this we this gives me the. Um, typo. Cool. Uh, and now we just have to reword it, I guess. But it doesn't really matter. It could be in any subset. So did I just submit it? Ooh, one time error. Oh, I, I knew I should have tested to a zero case. Um, or like the, that's just an annoying case, I guess. Um, okay, that's fair. Let's just do fit quick if n is equal to zero. Because if you have at least one element, you always return at least one element at the answer because that's always going to be your uh Best answer, so let's try again. Cool. Uh, so n square algorithm works. Um, the other way I would think about it is maybe do some kind of factorization on the previous number, which is square root of n times, or if you do some kind of prime sieve, um, then you could uh, get that a little bit faster and then do a lookup table, but that's a little bit or a lot complicated. Um, cool. Uh, and so yeah, so this is just dynamic programming problem for me. Um, hmm. Wonder if there's a slightly better solution, but that's okay. Uh, yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Um, yeah. So what's the complexity? So this is n squared because this we go through this n times, and then for each of those n elements, we look at n times. This is longest path in a DAG. Uh, in space, this is of n because we allocate all this stuff, uh, and we. Mm, do we need it? Yeah, because we kind of need it for the path construction, uh, path reconstruction of the dynamic programming. Uh, there may be other ways to do it, but that's the way that I'm doing it here. Um, cool. Um, this is a little hard for interview because you have to know math stuff, which on an interview doesn't come up that much. Um, but for a competitive program, this is probably like a standard-ish problem. So definitely practice this. Um, Cool. Uh, I think I think that's all I have for this problem. Um, yeah, cool. I have to set up my camera in a better way. But anyway, cool. Yeah, let me know what you think. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you out tomorrow. Bye-bye.